to go into the movies thanks for watching this video and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the uh, content that we're making today we are wandering around chicago visiting all locations from the dark night as many as we can in one day and tonight is going to be awesome because we're going to be screening or attending a screening of the dark night in bruce wayne's penthouse so you're going to get to see all that plus all the locations that we hit today so again like and subscribe and let's go ahead and jump in to our dark night batman locations We're standing right below the old Chicago post office building, which I believe is now repurposed into a bunch of uh, different businesses and things in there. But this is where the opening heist takes place. And you remember they zip line onto the roof and they do it from this building here. If you look up there at that vent, that one single square that is different than all the rest around it. If you go to the left four and up to, that is the window that they busted out. And then they zip lined across over onto here. When they're zip lining, you can see the bridge and the river down there at the bottom. Well, that's kind of disappointing. We, uh, we got into the building that portrayed the bank in the movie and there was only one door unlocked because they're closed on the weekends. The security guard said that we were not allowed to take any pictures and photos. I asked very nicely, but she said she'd get in trouble. But they are open on the weekdays. If you're ever up here on a weekday, you can go in there and uh, do some bank shots from the dark night and just across the bridge is the corner where we see the joker standing and you can see that parking sign still there the building on the right is pretty new at least newer than the movie and that'll do it for the bank heist The level they were on for this scene was purple, number six. And it starts off over here. So this is the corner where the bad guys were standing when uh, Scarecrow shows up and they're trying to make a deal. And then the fake Batman show up. And then the real Batman shows up. Okay, so we first see Christian Bale, the real Batman here, fighting, coming across here. And then, he latches on with his, uh, his gauntlet things that can carve into the side of vans that Scarecrow is driving. And Scarecrow goes around and heads down this way. And he slams up against this barrier, which I wanted to see if the scuff marks were still there, but they've painted it purple now, so you can't see it. All right, so after he gets knocked off of the van, he walks over to this spiraling uh, driveway that gets you up to each level in the parking garage and look what we can still match up the pipe there on the left side and that hole and He stands up over there. I'll go stand over there real quick. It's really high. So I don't want to get all the way up on the Okay, I got some vertigo there, so I'm not gonna climb up but Right down here is the circle. Let me show you that perspective and here's where we see Batman jump onto the top of the van. So a lot of the information that I've gotten for this particular location hunt is from a book that I cannot remember the name of. I got it as a gift from my boss actually. And it's like filming locations in the Midwest. So I was looking through that and apparently this parking garage's roof was the place where they set up the uh, bat signal. So it would be the roof of the Gotham police station. IBM building a few things were shot and we we're gonna start off with uh, the hanging fake Batman that the Joker kills 
tortures and hangs him right here. Or at least they bring him down right here. But you can see uh, the doorway here, proving this is the spot. Not that these are hard to prove, but uh, just interesting to match up. You know, this funky looking car garage back here as well. So that's where all that happened. Inside, they shot a bunch of scenes here. I'm gonna go in and see if we can find where Harvey Dent did his press conference. This building is now a hotel. It's called the Langham. And this is the corner where Harvey Dent gave his press conference. And you can tell they've changed quite a bit. So they made a little like lobby area here. This corner is where he was standing. They've added a revolving door. But look at that building there, that matches. And the one behind it, so aside from this building being where the fake Batman was hung and where Harvey Dent had his press conference, which was in this corner, it also was the interiors, or they filmed inside of here. Again, this is a hotel now. But they filmed the police commissioner's office, Harvey Dent's office, the mayor's office, and the interiors of Wayne Enterprises, all in this building. So a lot of interior scenes shot in here. And this is the IBM building, but it's also the, uh, the Langham Hotel. So if you come to Washington Street between Dearborn and Clark, you'll come to this courtyard, the fountain and that famous sculpture there. You might run into a bachelorette party on bicycles but it's also Wayne Enterprises up there. So we only see the exterior of Wayne Enterprises from a helicopter shot or whatever they were using. So I'll show you that shot to match up the building. And inside of this building is also where they shot the courtroom scene with Harvey Dent where they attempt to assassinate him during the uh, trial. Okay, so in the background of that shot, you see this and these buildings here on the right. And then Wayne Enterprises logo on the top of this building. All right, we're at the Chicago Theater, which is uh, the ballet in the movie. They don't show the sign, obviously, because it's gotta be Gotham. But this is where Rachel and Harvey Dent go to see the ballet, and they are disappointed because Bruce Wayne has taken all the ballerinas out onto his private boat. And so they were right here. And then they look at the door, and that's where the sign was that Bruce Wayne took, uh, took all the uh, dancers out. Let's hit up the next spot. Here at the Berghoff restaurant is where they shot the scenes where Commissioner Gordon goes and uh, they round up the mob guys who are dining inside of here. So let's go in and see if they'll let us match up a few shots. Okay, now we're inside the Berghoff restaurant. It's like a German themed restaurant, or I wouldn't say themed, because this is definitely more of an authentic, nice classic restaurant. It's been here for a long time. And uh, the employees are really helpful about figuring out where these spots were. So this looks kind of like where it was, but the lights, they don't quite match up. And I was confused. And apparently that's because this wall here was actually about right here. And this is the table where the guys were sitting and maybe the television was up there or up on this or something. But you can see, if you get this perspective, where the wall would have been here, two lights match that angle and then that stained glass matching. So they remodeled at some point. The wall moved back. These are bathrooms now. You can tell it looks a little bit newer, but this is where the bar used to be. And I think it was the same bar when they're all watching the television and the Joker tells all the bridge and tunnel people that uh, they're not gonna be able to escape because you can see this style of lights in the background. So you can see windows back there. So I guess this bar was here. Now this was 2011, three years after the movie. It's the same picture as this, which was, I guess the 1930s. Um, so yeah, I guess this bar actually has been here for a long time. It maybe just curved around that way. I'm sure some uh, commenters from the Chicago area can let me know. All right, 
right here is the uh, front door to Judge Cirillo's house. 1910. And we see the two guys approach here. You see the uh, ornamental doorway. All the same. That light is gone off the side for some reason. So they tell her she's got to go somewhere, but it's in the manila folder. So she goes to get into her car, and we see, I'm gonna say it's this angle, but I'm gonna walk around just in case, and I'll freeze frame on the exact right one. But we see those two guys escort her to the car, which is about where this Toyota is. After some, uh, some tense jump cutting, we see her turn on the ignition, and the car blows up, and it is goodbye Judge Cirillo. Also goodbye to this spot as we go to our next location. So we're over here looking at the Chicago Board of Trade building, which you'll probably recognize from a couple of big scenes in the movie. So let me see if there's any cars and I can just kind of walk out. And... This is where they shot the memorial service scene. All right, so this is the building where Batman goes inside and finds the cops who had their uniforms stolen sitting all around that post. And he goes to look at the window and there's a timer that makes the shade pull up to attract the, uh, the snipers. That was all on this face of the building. And there's the uh, Board of Trade building. And that was all during the memorial service. And it's also where they did the truck flip scene after the chase. You can see these here, these light poles and the columns on this building and those curved parts of the windows at the bottom. So the truck flipped right down there. Okay, so here is where they took that iconic shot of the Joker standing there as Batman drove past him. You can see the two manhole covers still there. They've since rounded off the yellow lines, but you can see the two manhole covers still in the same place on either side of it, right about where he was standing. And this is a couple blocks down from that building. So it is LaSalle and Monroe Street. And you can see this building here on the left and this building on the right. Very, very cool shot. I feel like it's iconic from The Dark Knight. So The Dark Knight for me, it's one of those like, I don't want to call it a guilty pleasure. I mean, I, it's one of the best superhero movies. I don't really like superhero movies, but The Dark Knight, in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Really, I can watch any Spider-Man movie, but I only really love the Sam Raimi ones. I also feel, kind of feel guilty liking Christopher Nolan movies. I don't feel like it's something that would normally fall under my taste, but I like every single movie he's put out. Even Interstellar, even Tenet, I love those movies. I love Inception. I don't know what it is. I think the reason that it's kind of like a guilty pleasure is because when I first went to college, you would ask like someone what their favorite movie was. Nine times out of ten, the guys would say either Dark Knight, No Country for Old Men, or uh, There Will Be Blood. I just got tired of hearing that answer. I thought it was kind of uh, became stereotypical. But I don't care. I'm openly saying I love The Dark Knight. And that's why we're in Chicago doing the locations. Okay, now we're getting into it. The big chase scene that happens on, in Gotham it's Lower Fifth, but here in Chicago it's Lower Wacker Drive. There was a flaming fire truck right here blocking this road that the Joker had placed so that he could properly ambush the Harvey Dent Escort. And so the uh, cars have to divert and go onto Lower Fifth, which again is Lower Wacker here in Chicago. We're now going to enter Lower Wacker. We didn't uh, try to line up any shots because of the traffic and because of the nature of the folks who live under there, but we did drive through. So again, they enter at South Wacker and West Monroe. They drive through and then they exit at Lower Wacker and North Garland. 
We walked down there, but I didn't get a chance to take any video. There were some shady looking characters camped in there and some right outside of it as well. I did though manage to get this picture on my phone and you can see the column and the stairs that were visible in the movie. Okay, so now we're below Millennium Park. This is the Metro station down here. This is where Batman comes in on the Bat Pod, chasing the Joker from that direction, this way. And you'll recognize the uh, lines on the ground, all the stuff on the ceiling. We came in from behind where I'm facing right now, so I thought that he probably did too, but when you line this angle up right here, you can see him driving towards me. And you get this store here, which they all look the same on the outside, but what really gives it away is this one column by itself, which is blocking one behind it. And then you see schedule information written right there. That is the metro station. All right, we're inside at the Twin Anchors Bar, and she's sitting right about where that cop was sitting. Having a Miller Lite. The guy goes to the bathroom, the bartender, and then Harvey Dent comes out. That's Two Face. And gets mad. And so you can see him standing right there. In this mirror just to the right. So apparently these are dents from when they shot the scene. And this is from his gun. Look at all the takes they did. I wonder if they like reimbursed you guys for the bar damage. No idea. <laughs> I'm sure they're just happy to have someone to talk around. <laughs> Okay, we are out here at the end of Navy Pier. And you probably know what this scene's gonna be, but this is the evacuation after the Joker uh, scares all the citizens of Gotham out. And what we can recognize is this dome here, as well as the pier I'm standing on and the one over there, which is a little bit shorter than this one. I can't match up any shots here because all that was done with a helicopter shot, I'm pretty sure. But this was the area where they were boarding those uh, ferries. Navy Pier. Great views of the city from over here. This is Trump Tower. We're right next to the uh, that building from earlier. But I wanted to show you Trump Tower Chicago because this is where they filmed the uh, climactic fight scene from the end, the Joker and Batman, where he dangles them off the building, or he pushes them off and then captures them and leaves them dangling there. That was all here at Trump Tower. And so now, I think we're gonna head to the screening and we'll show you the interiors. Now normally, I shoot everything as close together as possible and then I edit in order of the movie but for this video I'm just going to show you the penthouse at the end since that will have an event tied into it but let's go ahead and head that way Okay, we're now at the onset cinema event. We're gonna go watch The Dark Knight in there. And if you're wondering why we're not watching it in the actual spot where the Joker crashed the party, well, that is the spot. They've built a wall, they've remodeled since they got new owners, but there's some things that we can look at. First, I'm gonna show you this corner. This is where the television set was, where their living room, their living area, because it was kind of like a studio style um, setup. But when we see the Joker torturing the fake Batman on the television screen that was here and we get let's see if I can line this up kind of this shot here but you'd see a lot more columns when the walls weren't here 
and then the fake staircase it was like a spiral staircase that was right here standing in Bruce Wayne's penthouse everyone got a Joker card I guess if you get a, a Dark Knight pack of cards they're all Jokers this window which you can see elevators on either side on the other side of the window they built an elevator here which is where Harvey and Rachel come through and walk in this direction and that's about where she uh, talks about how Harvey catches all these criminals but he's scared of the trust fund brigade I think she calls them and then later the Joker and his goons come through here this is where they green screened the helicopter landing pad and they built a door for him to come through with the girls okay so they are uh, putting all the chairs away so I'm gonna really quickly get these shots in but this was the window where they throw Rachel out and uh, as you'll notice we're still on the ground floor so there's not a slanted roof out here for her to fall down and this is about where he was uh, holding her face and telling her how he uh, got the scars and then about here next to the fireplace is where Batman shows up and saves Rachel from the Joker and the fireplace was built at the base of this column which now has walls on either side of it okay so I just ran into uh, Joe from the Onset app and podcast to make sure to check them out we've done the podcast recently so uh, what's what's all the uh, the links? Yeah, yeah, so Twitter and Instagram is onset underscore app, and our podcast is on screen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all that. Right on. They do uh, amazing work, so definitely check them out. All right, that's it for Dark Knight locations. Thank you guys for sticking around this long. If you did, yeah, I will never forget seeing this movie for the first time. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We were on vacation, and every year we would go and see one movie. And I didn't even know it was a sequel at the time because I wasn't following things as closely uh, as I do now. Yeah, I was like, are they making another Batman movie? We went to see it. I thought it was incredible. So it was nice to see all the locations after all these years. I hope you enjoyed seeing them. And I also hope you'll like and subscribe to the video.